this problem with the Venn diagram says to shape the uh, Venn diagram to represent B intersect A complement. I'm going to actually show you two ways to do it. The first way is not really the way I would do it, but uh, I want to give you some options. Um, one way to do it is to shade the set B, which would be here, and then shade the set A complement, which are the things that aren't inside of A, and if you're going to do it this way, you're probably going to use two different colors, or else you're going to use some kind of different uh, cross-hatching scheme, but I'm going to use a different color. A complement are the things that are not inside of A, so I will shade everything that's not in the set A. So when I shade, everything goes as long as it's not in the circle A. Now the intersection is the overlap. It's the region that overlaps. And the reason I use two different colors is that with that overlap, now you can see where the two colors appear. Anywhere the two colors appear, you have a solution to the problem. So in this region, neither color appears, so that doesn't get shaded. Over here on the outside, only the red appears, so it doesn't get shaded. And here, only the black appears, so it doesn't get shaded. The region of the overlap is simply the part of B that's not inside the circle A. In other words, the solution set will be, I'll do it in solid black. It's this region here. And that's sort of the long way to do it. I hope that you don't have to do it this way, but whenever it comes down to a point where you're confused or unsure, you can always go back to doing it this way, which is essentially doing it by definition. In reality, the way I would do it is to interpret it sort of in words. You're saying, I want the set, the things that are in set B, and at the same time are not inside of A. The A complement means it's not A. So the things inside of B and at the same time are not in A. So if you think of it that way, I wouldn't have to do any of this previous preliminary shading. I could just say it's the things in B that aren't inside of A. So I know I'm mostly looking inside the set B, but I'm leaving out anything that laps over into the set A. And that gives me exactly the same result. So I would hope you could do it the second way instead of the first way and just sort of read the problem out and go directly to the solution set without the preliminary shading. But if you can't, you always have that to fall back on.